The Lord be with you. And also with you. you. Welcome again this morning to Lake Rayburn United Methodist Church. We're so happy to have you uh, to worship with us this morning. Uh, we have a few announcements before we go on. Uh, I had uh, sent a letter out last week about uh, reopening, or Alice sent the letter out about reopening, and uh, asked for your opinions and your advice, and so far, it has been unanimous that we stay closed for a while. It's still a little bit early uh, because of the restrictions put on us by the, uh, the church and the state as to what we can do when we reopen. So we will wait a little while longer. Um, there's a notice if you received your insert, uh, it says the church office will remain closed until further notice. You may drop off your tithe or offering through the mail slot in the fellowship hall door or mail them. Uh, and the address is box 5014 in Jasper. Okay, we're continuing to uh, live stream on Facebook. You can view us on uh, YouTube at the Lake Raver UMC or you can find us uh, on our website, lakeravermethodist.com, uh, where we worship on Sundays at 10.30 and uh, on Bible study on Wednesdays at 10 o'clock. Now, a very important thing we have here is on the 19th of June, we're going to have another uh, food drive. The lady that uh, helps run the uh, Jasper Shares says they are desperate for food uh, to help people, and their, their clientele is increasing, and the food is almost non-existent. So we're going to have a non-perishable food drop-off in the carport on the side of the church uh, June 19th. Now to go from 9 o'clock in the morning till 5 in the evening. So please take part in that. Birthdays this month. We have Kathy T, Maggie Shepard, Gary Festerman, uh, Linda Frank, Bonnie Rock, Don Freilich, Jim Wade and Robert Matheson. And also we have anniversaries. Gary and Carolyn Allen, Mike and Linda Frank, and Charlie and Nancy Nicholson. We wish you all uh, blessed days ahead with your birthdays and your anniversaries. Uh, now uh, we have nothing else. Uh, let us go to the Lord in prayer. <laughs> Holy Father, we praise you through your word and your Holy Spirit that has created all things. You reveal your salvation in all of the world by sending Jesus Christ to us, the word made flesh. So through your Holy Spirit, you give us a share of your life and love. Fill us with the vision of your glory that we may always serve and praise you. And Father, help us to come to a place where soon that we can meet again without fear of uh, sickness, and without fear of death. Help us to be able to come together and worship. Uh, we love you and we devote all of our lives to you. And now, Father, help us to pray the prayer that Christ taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Our scripture reading today is from the Old Testament, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, through chapter 2, verse 4. Six days of creation and the Sabbath. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light, and God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and he called the darkness night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together in one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry earth, the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together, he called the seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind that bear fruit and seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be knots in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the earth of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image according to our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creepy thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created mankind in his image. In the image of God he created them. Male and female he created, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given you every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. Our gospel lesson today comes from Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. 
the commissioning of the disciples. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> You know, this morning in Matthew's Gospel, he tells us in very few words, actually, of the commissioning of all the disciples. See, Matthew had told us that this is, well, this is probably the last time that Jesus appeared to his disciples. You know, the women had gone to the tomb and, and, and Jesus uh, told them, go tell the disciples I want them to meet me in Galilee. So they did. They were still kind of unsure, but they went to Galilee. They traveled just as Jesus had told them to do. Then at the sight of Jesus, the disciples worshiped him, but some of them still were unsure as to what was going on. He was really the resurrected Jesus. Was it possible that he was? That means maybe his promises would be true. Maybe he really is the Son of God. Then Jesus spoke to them saying, All authority on heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. That's my wife's favorite verse. I am with you always to the end of the age. That's where we have the assurance that we'll never be alone. Well, Jesus gave his disciples a mission. He gave them a mission that he wanted them to do, and he had been preparing them for this mission for the last three years. He prepared them to take this mission over, uh, reaching out to those who were lost. He taught them how to teach about God. He taught them how to love like God, how to heal like God. He taught them everything. And he says, Go out, reach out to them in my name. And he calls his disciples to, to go and make other disciples. Now the word disciple just simply means a learner, someone who is trying to learn more about Jesus or anything. So Jesus wanted to make disciples of everyone in the world, all the nations, then and now. And friends, we are today's disciples. He called the disciples to baptize the people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to convert sinners, to sanctify, to protect, and to perfect His church. Now that's a big challenge. It means going places that you really don't want to go. It means living with people that you really don't want to live with. It means reject being rejected by those who refuse to listen. Now those are terrible things. That's not something that you would put on a job interview and say, this is what I want you to do, because nobody would take that job. No one wants to be rejected by the very people who they're trying to help in a place that they don't really want to be. But you also have to see the other side of that coin. That also means you will be going in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. It means that you have received the power to accomplish what Jesus called you to do. It means that you will never be alone again. You have nothing to fear. Now, I believe that outweighs everything else, all the negative things we can say about it. God is with you. Then Jesus tells his disciples, teach them to obey everything that I have commanded you. Now, this is different than teaching about the Father and then baptizing them. 
To teach and then baptize is to teach about the Father's love. It tells us about God's creation and our place in it. It informs us about the great goodness that springs from our God. The Father. Love between God and his creation. That's what it speaks of. And the call to teach them to obey what he commanded them is different because it speaks of the love that we're to give to other people. It is love between us and other human beings. All nations, all of creation. Any of you remember when you were children growing up, they used to, I don't know if they still do, they used to teach the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. If we took all of Christ's teachings, everything that he said, and tried to roll them up into to one little ball when he's talking about our relationships with others, the golden rule would accomplish exactly what he was saying. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Friends, we can't put this command off. We can't delay it. We can't omit it and say, well, let somebody else do it. It's Jesus' words to us. It's his command to us, his disciples. Simply go and love each other. Treat everyone better than you treat yourself or everyone better than you treat your own blood family. Now, how could the disciples refuse that? How could they say no to Jesus? And today, how can we refuse it? How could we say no to Jesus? I don't think we can. Amid all the blessings we have, is the call to offer those same blessings to other people. Don't you want others to be as happy as you are? Don't you want them to feel as blessed as you are? And just because you give them these blessings and, and this knowledge and this love doesn't mean you're going to run out of it because God's got plenty of it. What a wonderful thing it is that our Lord has commanded for us to do in His name. But also we have to understand that the blessings we uh, we are receiving are just a, an explicit form the Holy Trinity that we talk about which is today is Trinity Sunday is not explicit it's not spoken of explicitly in the Bible but is implicit in the words that we hear and that bless us with the Holy Trinity of God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Spirit that's why we read so much of Genesis. That was a long reading this morning. But what was it designed to do? It was designed to remind us that God is all-powerful. It was there to remind us that it is God that created us. It is in God's hands that we live. But it also tells us of the Holy Trinity. It shows them at work all through that. Genesis says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We're speaking the Holy Father. And we hear the wind of God swept across the face of the waters. That's the Holy Spirit. Then later on we hear, let us make humanity in our own image. That is the Son, the Christ, and the Trolly, Holy Trinity. It's showing that the Trinity has been in place before the very beginning. Before we were, He was. So don't waste your time. Don't waste our time in trying to understand it. You know, the Holy Trinity is an interesting concept. The greatest scholars in the world don't even understand it completely. Maybe that's something we're not meant to understand. It's one of those God things that just blesses us. It blesses us abundantly. We don't know how, but I really don't care how, as long as God continues to bless us. And I know that God does bless us, and he loves us. And for that, I am eternally grateful, and you should be too. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let's pray. Father, we're so very thankful for you bringing us here today to hear your word uh, read and preach, and the music that comes and brings us wonderful sermons in itself. Thank you for being with us as you promised you always would be. In Jesus' name, amen. And now if you would turn your bulletin that you received to the back of it.
we have our liturgy for uh, the communion for today. You should have all received your your uh, cups in a little envelope that was left on your porch. If you did not, and you would like to join us in, in communion, please email us. Uh, go to our Facebook page and email us, and we'll make sure that we get you uh, the cups that you can receive Holy Communion as we are today. We'll start now with the Holy Invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Jesus Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves the Father's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks to Christ. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth is full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Most holy and loving Father, we ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ until Christ comes in final victory. And one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your son Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in your holy church all honor and glory is yours almighty father now and forever amen, amen. now if you would take the cups that have been delivered to you there is a thin uh, clear seal on the top, if you would remove that, there's a wafer there. This is the body of Christ broken for you. Now if you remove, remove the tin foil seal, we have the juice. This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
Father, we thank you for the blood and the body of Jesus Christ that he poured out on that most holy of days for us sinners, not worthy, most not even redeemed. We thank you for him in Jesus' holy name. And now go from this place with the love of God in your hearts and take with you all that God gives and give it to someone else. Amen. Mm -hmm.